We got nine movies to go through, and I would like to jump right into it, but I think we need context for who Tomie is before we start judging her movies. And there's no better place to get that context than the original manga. Junji Ito's Tomie is an interesting beast of a manga. It spans two completely different story arcs with a wide array of short stories in between. And if you're a Junji Ito fan, it's a fascinating evolution of his earliest art into his current style. Our title character, Tomie, is an undying girl that men obsess over until they kill her, themselves, or each other. But early on, Tomie is actually about Tsukiko, a girl that is harassed and haunted by Tomie. Tomie steals her boyfriend and manipulates everyone else around her. It's good, but if Tomie had ended with Tsukiko's story, it would only be an okay addition to the Junji Ito canon. However, after Tsukiko, the manga becomes a collection of short stories, with Tomie at the center. And this is where it really develops into an essential piece of Junji Ito's library. These short stories play around with Tomie's premise, putting her in a wide variety of situations and stories. She can be a creepy girl found on a mountainside, and then later she can show up as an evil stepmother. Ito does a lot more with Tomie than one would expect. I've always maintained that Junji Ito works better in short stories than he ever does in long form, and some of these Tomie shorts are among Ito's best. As these short stories continue, you really start to get a feel for what character Tomie is. She's a different breed of J-horror, separated from her sisters Sadako and Kayako. Tomie lacks that tragic backstory, or any backstory at all, leaving her a complete mystery. And unlike her ghostly counterparts, she's anything but silent. Tomie uses her beauty to manipulate her victims into doing her dirty work. She's much less likely to get her own hands dirty as she is to convince two men to fight to the death over her. The reader starts to even learn about her personality, how self-serving Tomie is, and more importantly, how she can put on a facade of innocence to lure in new targets. And I think this is important. I think at the core of every story in this collection is that Tomie is a monster pretending to be a girl. And this is important because once you start doing stories that try to make Tomie too sympathetic, you start to lose the core of what Tomie is. This doesn't mean that it's impossible to tell a story with a sympathetic Tomie. It just means that it's difficult when her villainous nature is so ingrained into her character. But who knows, maybe one of these movies movies will end up being the Ring Zero of Tomie movies. Not to sound too cynical, but the Tomie movies were born out of the J-horror boom that followed the ring. However, Tomie is a very different type of killer than Sadako or Kayako, and the movies would have to find a way to reconcile the disconnect between your average J-horror and Ito's source material. So let the struggle begin with the very first Tomie movie. The first Tomie movie is difficult because it's a slog to get through. There were multiple times where I just looked at the time remaining and I sighed to myself because it was just a slog. Uh, that being said, there are good parts to it and almost all of those parts are located completely at the end. So if you slog all your way through this, it does reward you with an ending that I would say is satisfactory, which I know doesn't really sound like high praise. Uh, let's go through this. So this movie has a kind of disconnected plot structure. There's the Tsukiko plot and the Tomie plot, for all intents and purposes. The Tsukiko plot is about our main character, Tsukiko, who is suffering from amnesia after past trauma. Her boyfriend is cheating on her. She has to go to therapy for her amnesia. Things aren't looking good for Tsukiko. The Tomie plot, as I call it, are just scenes with the eyepatch kid and Tomie doing things that never really amount to much. These scenes early on with Tomie are really just to remind you that she's here and link back to 
past events that, you know, we don't really see fully on screen until the end. And even then, it's kind of a tease. Uh, and, of course, the uh, Taguchi scenes are directly related to the Tomie plot. He's the detective that is investigating the Tomie case. Uh, however, I, I say Taguchi scenes, uh, that's not the character's name. I am, of course, referring to Tomoro Taguchi. You might know him as Tetsuo the Iron Man in the best movie ever made. Taguchi gets all of the exposition. He has two scenes early on, and they are probably his longest scenes of unbroken film time. And it's just him explaining how Tomie works, and basically explaining what our main character has amnesia about before we actually see it. So it's not much of a mystery, despite the fact that this, this movie is structured as a weird mystery noir thriller, rather than a body horror Junji Ito story. So, I don't know, I kind of like the idea of a mystery detective story like this, but I don't think it was done well here. In fact, I think it just kind of slogged down the whole movie. For about half of this movie, the Tsukiko plot that is just mundane relationship drama, and the Tomie plot that is a weirdly out of place detective story just don't interact at all. In fact, it's probably for even more than the halfway point. I would say for two thirds of this movie, these two plot lines do not actually directly interact with each other. And it's around that, that two thirds mark. Once you're two thirds of the way in, that things start picking up until the, the final quarter is a good little J-horror chill that you have fun with. It, it was all the stuff that I wanted from the beginning of the movie that it took me this long to get here. So how was this as a first outing for Tomie? I would put it smack dab in the middle, which is actually good for our purposes. The slog of a movie that this begins with, not really worth it. The ending, kinda, I, I like it, but it's not so special that it justifies filling up that time before it with nothing. From here on out, we are judging these movies on a basis of better than or worse than the first Tomie movie. Now our second piece of vital information here is how is Tomie herself. In this movie, she is played by Miho Kano. Up until the last section of this movie, I was gonna give it a zero because she didn't say anything and we never saw her face. Knowing where the movie goes, I'm kind of more okay with them hiding Tomie's face. I wish it was a little bit more incorporated into the plot. It kind of only makes sense when you know the manga. So Tomie doesn't do much for most of this movie, but when she comes out, god damn. Miho Kano does a great Tomie. She was apparently selected by Junji Ito himself to play the part of Tomie, and I can absolutely see why. She's creepy, she's mean, but weirdly enough, you kind of feel for her. In the brief few scenes where you actually see her on screen, somehow Miho is able to convey that Tomie is at once a monster, but also this sort of tragic figure. And given that basically she had to do this in 20 minutes, 20 minutes of screen time that Tomie has. And that's me being generous. I'm willing to bet if I actually bothered to get all of the screen time Tomie has, it would be less than 10 minutes. It's amazing that in that short amount of time, uh, Miho can completely nail this role. Uh, so with that in mind though, she's not in this movie a whole lot and that's gonna hurt her rating. Because, uh, I don't know, if we had more time with her, then maybe she wouldn't have been as good a Tomie as someone else. I don't know. Also, I haven't seen the rest of these movies, so I'm kind of leaving room for other people to be better than her. Uh, we're gonna give her an 8 out of 10 on the Tomie reading. We got a lot of movies to get to, so we're just gonna jump straight into Tomie 2, baby! All right, now we have Tomie 2, Another Face. This was originally not a movie, but a series of direct-to-video TV episodes, V-Cinemas. 
is what this was. And fans of J-horror should be familiar with the term V-Cinema. After all, Ju on the Grudge started as a pair of V-Cinema movies. And Tomie, another face, is kinda like Juwan in a weird way. Of course, this is a completely unintentional byproduct of being three episodes slammed together trying to create a false sense of continuity between all of it. And it's also very, very, very under budget, which is extremely noticeable going from the first Tomie movie. We got cheesy acting, cheesy lighting, this stock music that I honestly don't know whose idea it was to put in. And it kind of adds to the charm that Tomie Another Face has. At its best, it's working within its means. At its worst, it's trying something that it can't possibly do with the budget that it has. Being a series of 20 minute long episodes means that there's less time to waste overall. These episodes cut to the chase very quickly in comparison to our last move. Instead of dawdling around with, with some sort of mystery, at least the first and last one kind of cut to the chase. Unfortunately, this is also a sort of anthology that goes from strongest to weakest and definitely does not end on its best moment. Unless you're looking for like cheesy, so bad, it's good moments, in which case it ends on absolutely its best moment. <laughs> In comparison to the movie, Another Face is a lot more reminiscent of the original manga in terms of tone, atmosphere, and story points. So I guess it has that going for it, but honestly, after the first episode, which was a good first episode, the first episode is like a good episode of Tales from the Crypt, the second episode is like an okay episode of Tales from the Crypt, and the third episode is like a kind of bad episode. Basically, it's like Tales from the Crypt. It's just like that, basically, in terms of production quality and acting quality, that's what you have to expect. Japanese Tales from the Crypt. I kind of wish there were more episodes, and I kind of wish this wasn't a movie. I wish this was like a 13 episode series I could watch. That would be fun. It would be a fun thing to just kind of marathon through around Halloween time. But it is what it is, and there are the briefest hints of continuity with this one eye patch character who I'm almost certain they filmed extra pickup shots with just so that they can try to fit this all into a theatrical movie. His presence in the first two segments amounts to literally nothing but him standing there and then going away. And then he's a main character in the third segment, but he never references being in the other two two segments, even when they have the perfect moment to do so. Since this is a movie that we're talking about here, if they wanted to go the movie route, I don't think it was a bad idea to have a anthology of Tomie stories. After all, that's kind of what Junji Ito is known best for. I just think that it needed a little bit more continuity in the way of the grudge, where it's more about playing around with the timeline and showing characters that appear in one segment also appear in another, and having the audience piece things together instead of lazily just having this character be in all three segments and only actually be a main character in the third. That's not what we call continuity, that's what we call backtracking. Uh, so honestly, I think I've talked enough about Tomie Another Face. Its flaws are pretty apparent just from looking at it for about two minutes. Uh, if I was going to rate this based off of the first episode, I would rate it above the first movie. If I was rating this on the second episode, I would rate this 
on par with the first move. And if I was rating this with the last episode, I would rate it below the first move. So that gives us an average of five, I guess. Yay. Honestly, for what it is, it isn't bad. And I was expecting a lot worse considering how under budget this was. If you want to have a fun time, this isn't that long and it's not that bad. As for our Tomie of the movie, we have Aruna Nagai. I don't think she does a bad job as Tomie, but she does play up the more sweet and innocent facade that Tomie has, and only in a few occasions does that facade drop, and that's when she actually becomes much better. Unfortunately, for much of the movie, she's doing this really high-pitched cutesy voice. On one hand, I understand, and I think it's an appropriate voice for the character to manipulate men with. On the other hand, it kind of gets annoying, especially in the second segment where she never has that switch to her real personality. But on the other hand, when she does do that switch, she does it well. And I can't say that she was like bad. Ugh. It, it's, it's really difficult. It's difficult. It's really difficult. It really is. And I don't really care that much. So screw it. Runa Nagai gets a... 5 out of 10 on the Tomie scale. Anyways, that's two movies down and seven more to go. So let's keep on going with Tomie Replay, I think is the next one. I, I will not change this audio, even if it is not the right one. <laughs> Tomie Replay is the, uh, Tomie Replay is the first true theatrical sequel to the first Tomie movie, and it's trash. Uh, this one kind of a little closer to the manga and combines elements of several stories and then just goes off and does its own thing, which is much less interesting. What I did legitimately like about this movie was that it brought the body horror from the manga. Another Another face didn't have the budget for body horror, and the first one was too preoccupied with its detective story to have body horror, I guess. But Tomie Replay is so slow. This was my main criticism of the first movie, but here it's kind of even worse, and the final act doesn't even make up for it. The problem is that the spooky horror scenes are spaced out further apart, and even when they have happen, they don't happen for very long. As the movie progresses, of course, the spooky scenes become much more frequent, but it never gets good. It's bad. All of them are bad. This movie's rating is a 4 out of 10, and I assure you that is solely just for the body horror-esque stuff that is in about less than a minute. As for this movie's Tomie, my Hosho, she's getting a 4 as well. Why? <laughs> That's why. Where to begin with Tomie Rebirth? Being the fourth in a horror series, you kinda go in with low expectation. It's not every day that the fourth film in a horror franchise ends up being good. Unless, of course, you're Juwan the Grudge 2, my favorite Juwan movie, directed by a another favorite director of mine, Takeshi Shimizu. And it just so happens that Tomie Rebirth is directed by this very same Takeshi Shimizu. Clearly aping off the success of Juwan the Curse 1 and 2, Tomie Rebirth was made in the year between The Curse 2 and The Grudge 1. And before I watched this, I had heard about this movie and about about Shimizu directing it, and people seemed not to like it that much, especially Shimizu fans. Here's the thing though, I just had to sit through three mediocre to bad Tomie movies, which is completely different than watching this and going in expecting a Shimizu movie. Let me finally say on record that Tomie Rebirth 
so far has been the best film of the franchise. And something tells me that it's going to be a hard act to follow. Much like other Tomie movies, this one still moves slow, but unlike the other ones, the slow pace feels like it has a purpose. If Replay's plot was a flat line of excitement, then Rebirth's always has one or two little blips going on that keep you interested. At any point, the movie is building towards something and you can tell that it's building towards something. It doesn't feel like it's just wasting your time until the end of the movie. Tomie Rebirth actually has a plot structure that kind of keeps you interested. You see, it has two plot threads going on, stemming from two friends that help bury Tomie's body after their friend kills her. Once their friend dies, the movie splits into these two plot threads, one involving Shun and his mom, and the other involving Takumi and his girlfriend Hitomi. Neither of these are particularly interesting on their own, but when you're bouncing back between both of them, it actually holds up the movie pretty well. Neither one really outweighs the other, and there's always something happening in the movie because it keeps going between the two threads. Tomie herself also plays a much more active role in the plot than she did in the first movie or in Replay, which honestly, partway through the movie, I kind of thought about Replay, and I thought about how little Tomie actually did in that movie until the very end. In this, she is an active component to both of these plots and moves the story forward. You see, she's out to get these two guys, and it makes sense. It's like a little Japanese, I know what you did last summer. She has her targets for revenge or just to mess with them or whatever, but her motivations about why she is targeting these two specifically make sense. And here's where I think that Tomie Rebirth really is a great example of how much a director can influence a movie. By all accounts, budget, casting, and production-wise, Tomie Rebirth is no different from replay. Add on top of that that this movie is written by the man that would eventually write Sadako 3D, and you shouldn't have a recipe for a good movie. But bring along Shimizu, and suddenly things are looking a lot better. Shimizu's brand of horror already fits with the sort of Tomie story. It's very slow and implies a lot of things instead of outright showing you gore. Not that there isn't body horror, don't worry. That's back. Maybe not as much as there was in Replay, but it's still in here. Instead, much like Juan or Mari Bito, most of the gore and horror is implied instead of outright showing it. The horror comes from the situation itself, the absolute insanity that the character is going through, and there is no better example of this than watching Shun and his mom chop up Tomie's body. Because together, while they have a nice mother-son bonding moment, it's over the girl that Shun's mother just killed because she was jealous of Tomie's relationship with Shun. It's screwed up, and it's only more screwed up the more you think about it. And that's what sets it apart from the other Tomie movies. And by the end of the movie, I actually found myself caring about Takumi and Hitomi more than I thought I would. In complete honesty, Tomie Rebirth is a movie that I could see J-horror fans actually enjoying. It's a movie that I could see Tomie fans enjoying a hell of a lot more than the first two. And if somebody wanted to watch a Tomie movie, whether they were curious about it from the manga or were just a big fan of J-horror, right now, having not seen the future ones, I would recommend this one. But with the little asterisks at the top. You see, this is probably closer to a 6 out of 10 movie, and compared to The Grudge or Maribito, this certainly isn't Shimizu at his best. But on the Tomie scale, of which we are judging all of these Tomie movies, this is easily a 8 out of 10 Tomie movie, and so far stands as the best Tomie movie in the series at this point. But how is Tomie herself? This time around, she is played by Miki Sakai, and having her play a more manipulative role than other Tomie's have before really 
really just puts things in her favor. Miki is able to swing Tomie from cutesy and innocent right back to cold and villainous, sometimes within the same scene, without it feeling unnatural. And I think that's what the best Tomie so far have been able to do. So we're giving Miki a 8 out of 10. But she's not the only Tomie in this movie. For those of you that want to watch Tomie Rebirth, I'm not gonna let on too much. Although I get the feeling that you'll probably see it coming. But because there are two Tomie's in this movie, we are going to add that number to Miki's score, giving her a perfect 10 out of 10 on the Tomie scale. Good job, Miki, you did it. Yay. This was a surprise, and I'm glad that Shimizu stuck around with the Tomie series and turned it into something better with the next installment that was not directed by him, but still written by the Sadako 3D guy. Oh no. So it turns out that there are more Tomie movies than can fit in one video, and I'm feeling pretty burnt out right now. So why don't we take a look at one of one of the actors in the first Tomie movies, Tomoro Taguchi, and see a little bit of his filmography because, you know, I need like, I need a palate cleanser after all those Tomie movies. Uh, let's just go on IMDb here, find Taguchi, and okay, uh, here, let's just look at what he's done recently. Oh. Oh, what's... what is this? 